Hello YouTube and welcome to a another first impressions but not Linux. First off, I want to thank you all for your support that you've given me and everything that you've said positively about my distribution review. 52 unique distros in 52 weeks. That was a very difficult chore because every week I was blowing away a partition, throwing on a new unknown Linux distro, trying it out for three to five, six days, and then trying to do a screen capture, voice capture. You don't realize how difficult it really is to do that when every distribution some are just the same as others and yeah that's not a problem but I had to learn how to do it in Arch based, Gentoo based, Debian based, Ubuntu, Slackware based oh, all kinds of different distributions and it was nerve-wracking some distros were a lot easier to work with than others you know I I think the worst ones to work with were Red Hat based distros uh, but outside of that you know I did make it work some were clunky some were smooth but it is what it is and unfortunately we are going to have a clunky episode I don't even know if this is going to work but if you are watching this and you're hearing this then I made it work. Currently, we are reviewing PCBSD10, and we are using VLC to capture the screen, and we are using Audacity to capture my audio. Now, so far, audio capture has been very easy because it's worked great with Audacity. However, I cannot get VLC to capture audio, and I have attempted to capture audio through GDK Record My Desktop and just the CLI version of Record My Desktop with absolutely no luck whatsoever. So, it is going to be an interesting review. First off, let me say that PCBSD is not Linux. It is probably the closest thing you will come to being a Linux. It does use the GNU toolset and has a lot of the same Unix style operations. However, the file structure is slightly different, the directory structure is slightly different, and it is all in all its own beast. Now, BSD stands for Berkeley's Software Distribution, I do believe. Don't quote me if I did that wrong. <laughs> But if we do a C back, you'll see that instead of just slash home user, you've got your user directory in user home. And if we get back to the root here, and look, it pretty much from the outside here looks a lot like this, except the booting of BSD is a little different within the grub configuration. I installed this, of course, on my external laptop, on one of my other laptops on an external drive. Or when I say external drive, I mean one of the drives that's not virtual. But then I didn't know how to set up the grub, so I had to do some research because my Gen 2 partition manages grub. Now it's interesting because grub for BSD is pretty much the same way you would a Windows partition. You set the root and then you tell it chain loader plus one and it boots BSD. I didn't have to do any arguments, it just kind of went from there. Which was kind of nice and, and carefree in a way of doing that. To install it using PCBSD, it was very simple. The install media was easy to use. I really liked how it allowed me to choose the desktop I wanted. And since I am not familiar at all with BSD, I did choose to use KDE as its desktop. But it gave me the option for LXDE, XFCE. Uh, I don't remember if GNOME was there, but there were a lot of different flavors. I even saw Awesome Desktop Manager. 
out there. So there were some options to choose and of course some base packages that you could choose to install when you first got it all set up. Now it was a little difficult too in regards to the partitioning. I did not want to screw up my partitioning. So just to give you a quick review here, you're used to seeing in Linux SDA for your first hard drive, SDB for your second hard drive, SDC from possibly a USB stuck, etc. Well, here we have some links called 84S1, 2345, and there's 84 here, and 88, and 88S1 to blah, blah, blah. And if we do an ls-lsa uh, slash dev, that will show us the links and hidden files, etc. You will see, too, if we scroll back up here, that those are pointers to ADA0S1 and ADA1 which is ADA0 is equivalent to SDA1 and ADA1 is equivalent to SDB and so forth which is just a little bit different in the naming convention the CD-ROM for instance you're probably used to seeing SR0 and this here has CD0 but CD-ROM is pointing to it I have had terrible time with the sound as you can see here, we have the DSP 0.0, 1.0, 2.0, etc. With Audacity, if I pull that back up real quick, you'll see down here I actually have Dev DSP 5 for the mic, and it is recording with no problem. I cannot get any other program to record sound except for Audacity. I don't know what I'm doing wrong it is what it is and we make do with what we have hopefully this is working like I said if you're listening to this and watching this it means I was successful <laughs> we get out of this however and we move the little VLC window here and you will see that we have a PC BSD control panel which is a nice handy utility to go to and one thing I have not been able to figure out in BSD is how to configure my touchpad. Now remember there is probably a method to doing it. I've only been working with BSD for a few days and so I am not too familiar. I'm lucky I have it where it's at right now. It normally does not take this long to start up and I hope I'm not running into problems because it has been pretty stable other than issues of getting some things configured. I'm not sure why the control panel doesn't want to start. There we go. In PC BSD control panel, you have what you would normally see in just about any other control panel. It's a little different. Uh, my sound configuration, I've gotten external sound to work. I just can't get anything to work with the microphone except for the audacity. Now, it does have pulse audio, and that kind of screws a lot of stuff up. And it is that, but then you can get into system configurations here. And another problem I'm having is, like I said, the touchpad, very sensitive. It's constantly wanting to use tapping, which I can't stand because I'm constantly, it's constantly detecting my palm or something and, and using it. But if we go into here with the mouse, there you can set up double click and single click, but there's nothing for touchpad. And I have searched for touchpad software, synaptic software, anything like that. I just can't find it. That's where I'm finding BSD to be very lacking. To me, the look and feel of PC BSD 10 is what I would expect what I felt like with Linux possibly 7 to 10 years ago. And yet, if we open up Conqueror, just I use Conqueror just because it's a standard type KDE application that I know works really well and if we go to about KDE we're running 4.12.2 so it just has that boxy uncoordinated old XP-ish style look and feel and yet we're running close to the newest version of KDE which kind of disappoints me maybe it's the colors and the look and feel of this right here but most of the BSDs that I have looked at don't even let you get into a GUI right away. You, you are left at a command line, and if you're not familiar with BSD, it's very difficult, in my opinion, to learn and get the 
ports and all that proper. And I could sit here and I could play with it for two or three weeks and I'd probably learn it and grow it and get into it. Gen 2 is still my favorite when it comes to Linux distros or alternate Windows, Microsoft, or uh, Mac OS's, etc. So I'm not going to take the time to do that. But I do want to give you this quick overview. PCBSD is an alternative to Windows. It's just a little bit behind on its, I don't know, uh, its appeal. You know, the, the, the applications, for instance, if we go to the App Cafe, in some areas it feels like it's really ahead of its time with some great applications like in the recommendations, Firefox, Chromium, Opera, Thunderbird, LibreOffice is available, Apache OpenOffice, um, Audacious, VLC, Home Bank for Finances, etc. And you can find some things, even the GIMP, you know, those are all great. And if you go into here, you can even get down into some subcategories and find things, such as if you were looking for some games to pass the time. There are a few games here that you can choose from, and I say a few as I scroll through uh, probably at least a hundred or close to a hundred here. A very good selection. But then when I look at other things, I tried, for instance, to get uh, some video editing software so I could work with that. And if I look here in the Browse apps and get back here to Home and Browse Categories and go into Multimedia, for instance, there was Caden Live, but Caden Live blows up whenever I would try it. I am going to try OpenShot instead. There are some some options though available. It does look like an interesting like this right here means that it's command line interface. This means it's a Windows application with a graphical and command line. Um, it's interesting that they have Handbrake as command line and they don't have the GUI available for it. I have found a lot of problems trying to compile code, thinking that maybe I could just compile the C code. I could not get Simple Screen Recorder, for instance, to compile. I couldn't get GUVC Viewer to compile. If we go to the console, for instance, again, and we go back to the downloads, direct I might have deleted those things, you know, I did clean it out. Yeah, there is the SSR directory. So if we go into Simple Screen Recorder here, and if I do a configure, like I normally would do when setting this up, it'll get so far and it'll find a DL or a missing um, library right here, DL Sim. Now I've searched all over BSD how I could install that. It's not available within the App Cafe, and I can't find where I can get it or how to even get past that point. So I'm stuck and can't go forward. I tried multiple versions of GUVC View and it kept telling me that there was a library that was installed that needed to be at least 4.0 or better. I went back about two years worth in the different versions of GUVC hoping maybe I'd find one that would support the version that was on BSD and there was nothing that worked. Every single one of them came back and said the software was too old, I needed to update and nowhere could I find in BSD's directories or repositories whether or not I could update that software. Now they do have repositories. If you go into configure, for instance, you can go to the repositories and it just has the official PCBSD, which lends to the idea that you could install another repository. I have not figured out how to do that, nor have I found any other repositories I could add. And that's not meaning that there aren't, there, there aren't some out there. I just don't know where to look and Google is not my friend at this point in time. But it looks like we're looking for some sort of a repository file that it wants me to open to bring in and I can't find those so we are stuck with just the bare bones of what we see here now I did get an alternative to GUVC for instance PWC view I believe is what it's called we'll pull that up for a moment and it will get the webcam working and as you see there's my ugly mug got a haircut Woo woo. <laughs> but I notice it's very slow and, and, and the words are going to be completely off. You're going to think you're watching some Japanese karate movie, kung fu, all that sort of thing. So we won't keep that up there. There we go. 
For the most part, I got a lot of the basics working in PCBSD, and it seems to be okay. But all in all, it's a little bit disappointing. It feels kind of unpolished to me. But they are definitely getting there. They're definitely moving on. It's always good to see alternatives to Windows and Mac for those who just want something else and don't want to have to pay to try some a new OS out. It still uses a lot of free open source software and that is always a good thing. So I hope you enjoyed this review. If it's morning, evening, noon or night, whatever you're having, I hope it's a good one. Thank you for watching the PCBSD10 review. And do remember if you are a BSD fanatic guru, this is the first time I have ever looked at BSD. I've not tried it other than to boot to a, D a DVD or a CD in the past. That just took me to a command line, played with it a little bit and said, okay, I'm not smart enough for this just yet. Although I can manage a Gen 2 box with no issues, but I've been doing that for over 10 years. And it was probably the same way the first time I ever messed around with Gen 2. So as a review, take it as you like. But this is a newbie, beginner's opinion of BSD, nothing more. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. And we will talk to you all another time. Bye, guys.